It's baffled scholars for two millennia. It is a puzzle made of multi-dimensional elements, an enigma with roots that reach back to the dawning of time, perhaps before. Daniel explained part of it. Ezekiel and Isaiah had glimpses into it. John saw it all for the time of the end. That time is now. Join Derek and Sharon Gilbert on a journey that spans the course of history, from Eden to Mount Hermon, from Hermon to Babel, from Babel to Rome, from Rome to the cross, and from there to us. Biblical prophecy is coming true before your eyes, and to understand it, you must discern the times both then and now. It's time to unravel the threads of this all-encompassing prophetic paradox. It's time to unravel Revelation. Welcome to Unraveling Revelation. I'm Derek Gilbert. That makes me Sharon Gilbert, and I want to welcome you to our barn that we were able to do because of you and your encouragement, as long as your financial, as well as your financial support. So thank you. We appreciate your prayers, and uh, th this is truly a blessing to have this dedicated space, and we look forward to uh, more exciting programs, not just from here, but uh, on the other side of the room, presentation videos. We've got uh, space over there for our, our work with Skywatch TV and mm -hmm. podcasting area. So uh, we, we plan to put this, this building to good use. And again, we thank you for your help in making this possible. Uh, please take a moment and download our free mobile app that brings all of our content right into your smartphone oh, or yeah. tablet. But it's it also- It's right here on my phone. That's how I watch everything. I've got it here and on my phone. Um, I've got it on every one of my <gasps> mobile devices. No. Phones, tablets, um, iOS, Android, Amazon, Kindle Fire. And not only does it get all of our video content right to you, audio content as well, mm -hmm. our weekly Bible study. It's got a Bible module in there with multiple translations, an audio Bible, no oh, less. Yeah. And a messaging section where you can exchange messages, questions, ask us questions, mm -hmm. uh, and ask and give a prayer for one another, which really has turned out to be a blessing. Very active so, prayer group in there. It's wonderful. So active, yes. So You'll find a link at uh, gilberthouse.org slash app or unravelingrevelation.tv slash app. Do you know that last week, and we'll pray that we can get through this week's program, by the way, without trucks knocking on the door, <laughs> but last week we ended with this slight reference to the Nephilim mm -hmm. in Israel, the offspring of the angels who decided to sin, who coupled with human women, right? Uh, the giants. Yeah, and uh, you may think that, now what does this have to do with Revelation and end times prophecy? There's the nothing, Bible. yeah, but it's it's been somewhat, um, I, I would say sanitized. Yeah, sanitized the, for your protection. Yeah, the, the translations, the English translators over the years have not really understood the cult of the dead in ancient Israel. Mm -hmm. um, the word, Why we do what we do. Exactly, the word Rephaim is often translated in scripture as the dead or the shades or the departed mm -hmm. instead of as a proper title, a proper name, mm -hmm. which is how it was understood by the Hebrew prophets. These were the giants. The Rephaim the were the giants. The giants the giants. Yeah. We and call them demons. Right, and this was the understanding of Jews of the second temple period, the early church, they understood that uh, the spirits of those giants destroyed in the flood of Noah became demons. And Jesus certainly paid attention to demons he was casting them out left, right, and center, as were the apostles after this. He could. His. He, he did. He, he addressed that whole cult of the dead area mm -hmm. that you and I call the Valley of the Shadow of Death. He spent right. a lot of time there. Yes. So that's the Old Testament, the, the giants. Then the New Testament, Jesus came along and he was kicking the giants out. Are they still here? Well, assuming that demons are still here, and we do, mm -hmm. uh, and we I do. think deliverance ministers would certainly agree with that. And uh, when we see uh, reports from uh, our brothers and sisters in places like Africa and uh, elsewhere in the Southern Hemisphere, mm -hmm. especially, for them, it's a, a way of life. They understand that uh, the spirits that they contend with are demons. And uh, uh, again, when we go back to the writings of the early church fathers, it was understood by them, at least until the time of Augustine in the early fifth century. So for the first 400 years after the resurrection, there was no question. Demons were the hybrid spirits or the spirits of those hybrid beings mm -hmm. created through the uh, illicit, uh, unholy unions of the uh, sons of God in Genesis 6 and human women. They had a physical form right. before the flood, before Noah's flood. 
And because they were air breathers, everything that breathes air mm -hmm. died. Right. Unless it was on the ark with Noah. They were not on the ark with Noah. So their bodies died, but the Lord allowed their spirits to continue. We don't know exactly why. It may have something to do with continued temptation. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But the fact is the Lord saw fit to leave them here. And I believe that they can still communicate with their daddies mm -hmm. who are in Tartarus. Right. And that is, um, I think, the reason for a lot of the, uh, the demonic activity that uh, takes place on earth today. Paul referred to some of the uh, worship of pagans as um, uh, sacrificing to demons. Mm -hmm. You know, the, mm -hmm. the meat that they sacrifice to idols, sacrifice right. to demons. Referred to their teachings as the doctrines of demons. Mm -hmm. So clearly these entities have influenced humanity for thousands of years. We don't see, interestingly, we don't see any examples of demonic exorcism or the exorcising of demons in the Old Testament, not the way, or, or the casting out of demons in the Old Testament, no. not the way we do in the New Testament with Jesus and the apostles. Um, this was known, however, to the pagans around ancient Israel, Mesopotamia, Canaan. There are texts, uh, you know, from the north in, in uh, the Hurrian and Hittite territories, uh, in the west, the Greeks and the Romans. Th there were magical spells that one could cast to try to get rid of demons. But we don't see that in the Old Testament for some reason. Uh, not there are specifically. Some, not specifically, no. Uh, we, we see a hint of it with the story of King Saul, where he was tormented by evil spirits mm -hmm. that were soothed or placated when David played his, mm -hmm. his lyre. Um, there was something spiritual about that that... Uh, that gave Saul relief from these uh, demons that were tormenting him, these evil spirits. But we don't see it in the way that we do with the ministry of Jesus. Clearly something had ramped up, it seems, by the time Jesus appeared on the scene. Oh, I agree. Now, getting back to today, last week's program, we talked about these seductive conspiracy theories. Right. Again, yes, there are conspirators in this world that conspire uh, with one another against our Lord God Almighty and right. against his church. But not all conspiracy theories are legitimate. No, no. Some, however, are. And some of them include this Nephilim belief that they're everywhere, there are giants everywhere, and some of them are on other planets and they're coming in UFOs. And that gets into a whole... Look, I'm not... I do not want to... Uh, say to you, if you believe in those things, that you're being foolish. I'm not saying that at all. Because the truth is, we don't know. It's very difficult to discern things that are part of an unseen realm. Right, right. And, and that's one of the reasons that we focused in our research on what we can document, which are mm -hmm. the uh, religious texts, both in, in Scripture, which is the mm -hmm. ultimate and the ultimate authority. Everything is measured in comparison to mm -hmm. the Bible, but um, we look at what the pagans around ancient Israel believed and how that's reflected in the writings mm -hmm. of the prophets and the apostles. Um, that we can document. We, we cannot come to you on, on this program and show you the remains of a, a 12 foot or 15 foot giant from ancient Canaan uh, if those bones exist. And, and I, they might. We, we, we love right. the late Dr. Tom Horn, and he talked with a number of experts, one who had been one of the administrators at the Smithsonian. He was told those bones exist. Therefore, I believe that they do. Oh, sure. And there I are believe that they have and they've been dug up. Multiple accounts from the oh, late absolutely. 19th century, early 20th century newspaper accounts, mm -hmm. uh, even you know, going yeah. back further in the 19th century. So we know that they, they, they did exist, right. that they did lose their bodies. The bones are there. Are they there today? Are there living giants other than the you know, extra tall human being? Are there 12 foot tall giants out there? Yeah, it's, it's possible. In Miami. It, well, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's possible. But what we can focus on are the occult-based religious systems, these de demonic doctrines yes. that have been taught to humanity through the years. And that we can document, and we can trace that back to the Nephilim. But now, coming back to Miami, which we talked about yes. last week, if you've not heard the story 
Uh, apparently, just after New Year's, there was a uh, an altercation at a mall in Miami mm-hmm. that resulted in dozens of police vehicles, b- b- units being called to the scene. And a rather low-res, grainy video shot from what appears to be an apartment building across the way seems to show a very large, um, shadowy entity moving uh, against the mall. G- high, high lit against the, the wall of the mall. Mm-hmm. And um, the claim is that because the police response was so over the top that uh, it, it must have been the result of a demonic giant or a, a UFO alien yes. giant or some sort of thing, seven to 10 feet tall. Um, and of course, this is coming just months after we've gotten the reports of these levitating giant entities yes. in, in uh, Peru. The, the in face the remote, peelers. Yeah, the, the so-called pelicatas, the uh, face peelers in uh, the remote Amazon jungle. So we're seeing these stories that are, are kind of popping mm-hmm. every few weeks, every few months. And uh, there are a lot of people who believed that this was a legitimate story because, uh, again, the, the reason, the official reason given by the Miami PD was a, a fight at the mall. Teenagers getting involved in a fight. And, what I uh, read was that they had actually set off firecrackers. Right, therefore, right, right. the report to the police was shots fired. Y- exactly. You, you get inside a mall with the echoes and it may sound like gunfire. Yeah. And you don't know where the shots are coming from. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the police are concerned that there may be dozens, perhaps hundreds of potential victims inside the mall. So yes, they would send an overwhelming response, 60 vehicles reportedly by some accounts. So I, I don't think the police response was unwarranted. I think they responded in a way that they felt appropriate for the potential mm-hmm. seriousness of the situation. Remember Florida wasn't that long ago where you had the uh, the Parkland High School shooting where uh, more than a dozen Students, teachers were shot and killed, and the police were heavily criticized for not going in to try to stop it, but standing exactly. outside and waiting. So I, I suspect, I don't know, I'm not law enforcement, don't have any law enforcement experience or background, but I suspect that police are somewhat sensitive to that, especially in Florida. We need States. to interview Carl Gallops about that because he yeah. did serve as a police officer. That's true. That's mm-hmm. true. He would have some understanding of what, what is the appropriate response. Yeah, yeah. So anyway... What actually happened in Miami? How do we process that as Christians? And how does it relate to what is going on prophetically? Do these entities have a role to play in the end times? Yes, they do. And that we can show you from scripture and we'll do that after the break. Giants, gods, dragons, they're all real. We may not see them with our natural eyes, but their handiwork is evident in what's happening in the world around us, the spiritual warfare taking place. It is so true. It's obvious in Israel, but worldwide. Historically, we've seen this happen. And we want you to get excited about the Old Testament and the New and the giants, gods, and dragons within it because your kids need this information. So do you. Yes. We're living in prophetic times. Help make sense of it with our special offer through July. Our book, Giants, Gods, and Dragons, which takes a fresh look at end times prophecy. My book's Bad Moon Rising about the spiritual forces behind Islam and Last Clash of the Titans, the overlap between what we were told is Greek mythology and the Bible. And our DVD based on the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. All of this, an $80 value for just $45 plus shipping and handling. Now through July, only at our online store, gilberthouse.org slash store. Welcome back to Unraveling Revelation. I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert, and uh, we want to remind you that we still plan to go to Israel November 3rd of this year. We're going to be there, what, 12 days? November 3rd through 12th. And you can vote in advance. You can also vote absentee ballot. Yeah. We didn't realize when we set the dates that, oh, yeah, election. Oh, I did. (laughs) Well, see, you're you're way ahead of it. Uh I just thought, okay, new dates, great, let's go. 
Uh, but yes, it will fall during the uh, presidential election here in the United States. But uh, yep. again, you can vote absentee. You can vote uh, in some states. You can vote early. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you can do it by mail. I, I really don't like that practice. But if you live in a state where that's possible, okay, maybe. You can uh, also but, take your absentee ballot right to the local uh, election board. So you can hand it to them. Yep, yep. So anyway, uh, information on the tour. And this, by the way, does not include the optional three-day extension to Jordan. So if you go with us there, you actually get back around the 15th instead of the 12th. Uh, and that will take you to uh, Mount Nebo, mm -hmm. this Mountain of the Travelers. Remember that name because that's important later. Um, also, Petra and um, a very important historically and prophetically location. Oh, yes. Not to mention being visually stunning. We may be going also to Herod's Castle over there. Oh, yeah, we yeah. We wanted to go this last time and we didn't have enough time to go over there. So we'll, we'll see if we can work that out. And I apologize. I can't remember the name of it, but it's sort of like Masada, mm -hmm. except it's in Jordan. Right. Um, and that was the location, I believe, where the head of John the Baptist was presented to Herod Agrippa. Ooh. Very yeah. important. A lot so, of history took place in Jordan. Yes, and the Jordanian people are very proud of that history and uh, very willing to share it, happy to share it with uh, with Christians from the West. So uh, more information available online and a place to reserve your spot at gilbertsinisrael.com, gilbertsinisrael.com. Okay, my question, we're talking about giants and Nephilim and whether they're you know available today, you can actually go find one, they would show up mm -hmm. and be legit existing in physical I can touch him space. Yeah. There's the uh, the Kandahar giant, which is a story that uh, you may be familiar with mm -hmm. if you follow the work of L.A. Marzulli or Steve Quayle for any length of time. Mm -hmm. um, L.A. has interviewed one of the uh, team that was responsible for confronting and then removing the, the remains of the Kandahar giant, mm -hmm. uh, Kandahar in Afghanistan, apparently uh, reportedly encountered by a Marine unit. And it took this squad of Marines, everything they had, and they lost a couple of men, mm -hmm. to take down this giant who, uh, and I don't recall the size, but he was... He was very large. I want to say he was like 18, 20 feet. Excessively he was very, large. Very, very large. But, took uh, up most of the plane. Yeah. Um, and were it not for L.A. actually doing the work to find this gentleman and yeah. the gentleman being... Um, believable. So reliable. Um, yeah, I would I would not credit the story. So it is entirely possible mm -hmm. that these entities are still out there in some form. How is that possible? Well, we go back to Genesis uh, and Genesis chapter six, where it says um, the, the Nephilim, the giants were on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God went into the daughters of men, as Mike, Mike Kaiser, Kaiser has said. pointed out, yes, whenever the sons of God went into the daughters of men. Um, so again, very difficult to document because we don't have access to the bones. We don't have access to the military team. Um, but what we can show is what we know from scripture and other pagan texts regarding the occult worship right. of these entities and their spirits. I think that, and these, these are fallen angels, not demons, not, not the, the spirits of the giants going into women. They may try to do that. But we're talking about an actual fallen angel. Yes. The ones that were sent down here after Babel, mm -hmm. they are messing with women. Right, right. And uh, is that possible? Well, yeah, the Bible tells us it did happen in Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what those verses mean. And then uh, they, whenever they go in. Right. In so after. it may have been uh, may have been additional giants created after the flood. We know from the book of Hebrews that sometimes we entertain angels unawares. Yes. Now, let me suggest that since the fallen angels that came here after Babel are well aware of what happened to that first group, right? that they're going to be a little sneakier about what they do. Yeah. Um, and, and that's why I, I have been reluctant to say unequivocally that, yes, this, is contrib that, that this continues mm -hmm. to go on. Because the first wave, the first incursion, the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6, we know from Peter and Jude, mm -hmm. they are now locked up in Tartarus. In chains, the fallen angels, the demons, the spirits of those giants destroyed in the flood, they're still wandering the earth. Mm -hmm. um, would another, a later Elohim, uh, small e Elohim, not capital mm -hmm. E Elohim, would they risk that same punishment by cohabiting with a human I woman? Don't I don't know. know. May I make a suggestion? I spend a lot of time taking a look at transhumanism. And within the transhumanism movement, 
are ways to epigenetically enhance your body's ability to uh, live longer, mm -hmm. be stronger, not necessarily going to make you taller, but if you do things that allow entrance, in other words, if they're if you're only saying, I'm going to eat well, you know, that's different. Mm -hmm. If you are saying, I am going to eat sacrifices to this deity or that deity because I believe that he or she can make me eternal, mm -hmm. make me live forever, this is something that someone might do very quietly or with a small group. These things took place in the in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. Why wouldn't they be being take to, taken place today? That way, by inviting in the spirit, and in that case, it could be a demon, mm -hmm. inviting in that spirit, that that spirit would make you feel stronger, would make you feel smarter, yeah. would make you feel more, well, almost godlike. Well, we, we argued in the book Veneration that um, the, the, the Philistine giants... Yes. Goliath and uh, his buddies, uh, Ishvi Ben Ov, mm -hmm. were doing exactly that. Yeah. That we cannot document that they were literal blood descendants of the Nephilim. In fact, the Hebrew term translated descendant in 1 Samuel 21, descendant of the giant or descendant of the Rapha, does not mean blood linear genetic descendant. What it means is a devotee of, mm -hmm. a member of a group into which one is consecrated or initiated. Right. In other the words, the fact that their name is Ben Ov. Ben Ov, son of the medium, son of the necromancer. Mm -hmm. uh, this suggests that those Philistine giants, which we know from the book of Joshua, that only in Gaz Gaza and Gath and Ashdod did some remain, uh, that that was the center of a cult that venerated these spirits they were possibly possessed by these demonic spirits in a way similar maybe to the Viking berserkers. And it may have been a lineal thing, a lineage thing that the parents did it and the grandparents did yep. it and the great-grandparents did it and epigenetically changes were made that they got taller, they got stronger, they got more, um, became more of a fit extension. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But even today, when you and I were touring uh, Sardinia years ago, right. one of the places, when several of the places we went to were tombs of giants. Mm -hmm. And we were told by a very trustworthy guide that even today, when a young boy turns 12 or 13, that he spends an entire night in one of those tombs. Why? Trying to absorb the spirit or the power of the giant yes. buried in the tomb. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh that that is uh as you say may result in epigenetic changes mm -hmm. to the dna mm -hmm. of the person involved for uh uh making one faster stronger um more alert a, a super soldier as it were mm -hmm. uh and we know from some of the strange research that took place following world war ii inside both the CIA and the Defense Department that uh, they were looking for ways to weaponize the occult. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, there was a book by the uh, author John Ronson turned into a movie which was played for laughs. And it's not funny, the, the title of the book and the movie, The Men Who Stare at Goats. Yeah, which that was book was not funny. No, the book was not funny. The movie played for laughs, but not funny. It dealt with the occult research going on at mm -hmm. uh, Fort Benning to try to use and weaponize the occult and the spirit realm to turn American soldiers into super soldiers. Now, let's bring this back to prophecy. First of all, I want to just say one more thing about the uh, Miami uh, incident. It looked to me in that video that the spirit or that the uh, shadow that was seen was just that. It was not a an actual mm -hmm. entity. It was the shadow of a police officer. Depending upon lighting, that, that shadow can be huge. Right. Uh, and you had 60 police vehicles with their, their you know, mm -hmm. lights flashing and headlights on and, you know, searchlight spotlights going it was the shadow of somebody walking between the cars right. in the mall it was not there was not a, a an alien from outer space or a giant walking around at the mall in miami um, but in scripture we see in revelation or rather in the book of ezekiel rather which we think connects to revelation 19 and the war of armageddon and we go into this in uh well last clash of the titans bad moon rising um happy to explain it at more length 
some other time when we've got more than three and a half minutes left in a program. Uh, the War of Gog and Magog, Ezekiel 38 and 39, concludes with God on the battlefield. I am the Holy One in Israel, not of Israel. That's He's on the battlefield. The That's the only time that happens in the Old Testament. That's the only time it happens in the Bible, after Armageddon. The uh, gruesome feast in Ezekiel 39, same as the one in Revelation 19. But in Ezekiel 39, 11, we read, On that day, the day of the Lord, Armageddon, I will give to Gog a place for burial in Israel, the valley of the travelers, east of the sea. It will block the travelers, for there Gog and all his multitude will be buried. Now, that mountain of Avarim that Moses was called to, Mount Nebo, Avarim means travelers. That term, that word travelers, there's an entry for it in the Dictionary of Deities and Demons in the Bible because travelers was a term applied by the Canaanites to the spirits of the Rephaim, mm -hmm. the spirits of the giants. These Rephaim spirits, the travelers, summoned to the threshing floor of El, the Traveling tabernacle of El. the unseen realm into the seen realm. Exactly. There are some older Bible dictionaries that translate the word, the Hebrew word, avarim, as those on the other side. Mm -hmm. And they justified that by saying, well, it's because the mountains of avarim, the mountains of Moab, east of the Dead Sea, they were on the other side of the Jordan. Mm -hmm. Yes, but they were almost almost right. I think what it means actually is those on the other side of the veil. Yes, yes. They... And that threshing floor scenario, I believe, means that they will be resurrected into new bodies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. No, no. And uh, that's, I think, what it means when it says it will block mm -hmm. the travelers. But here's the other thing, coming back to your point about the... the um, worship of demons, the Philistine giants, Viking berserkers, the modern transhumanist movement, yeah, um, trying to extend life radically by perhaps engaging in some ritual uh, activity that changes you epigenetically. Will this army of travelers that accompanies Gog of Magog, Gog is the Antichrist's um, commander in chief, the military leader, mm -hmm. Will this be a demonic army uh, or will this be a, a human army that has turned itself into fit extensions for these spirits of the giants I, to come against Israel for the final battle? I think that is entirely possible. Does that mean that the resurrection ceremony has been completed? No, I don't think so. I think that that's something else that they're trying to do. Uh, the whole purpose of the fallen angels mating with women was to create an army. Mm -hmm. They want right, to create right. another army. And if they can't succeed in that, then they will do it through uh, robotic means, cyber means, or they will take a human cyber uh, hybrid of some kind. But they will find a way to, in material space, fight against our Lord. Yeah, and they will need to occupy or possess a physical form, a human. Yes. And if this takes place after the restrainer is removed and after the church is pulled out of here, there may be nothing that stops them from taking whatever humans they choose, using those bodies as part of this army. So now is the time. Accept Christ as your savior because that is the only way you're going to avoid all of that terrible ending. You don't want that. Amen to that. Thank you for watching. This is Unraveling Revelation. Unraveling Revelation is a viewer-supported outreach of Gilbert House Ministries. Follow us online at unravelingrevelation.tv and gilberthouse.org.